Oh, I have just uh, this problem I couldn't so, uh, solve. So I will uh, stay with here. Okay. And I will. Okay. Okay, let me Continue. begin. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Iran Bayraktar. I am an aerospace engineer and I am a research assistant in Unmanned Intelligence Systems Laboratory. Today I am going to talk about comparative performance of YOLO 9 and YOLO 10 versions for vehicle detection towards real-time traffic surveillance with UAV. In my presentation, first of all, I will tell about our, what's our purpose, then I will continue what's object detection and what is UAV-based object detection. Then I will talk about the, uh, the basics of YOLO algorithm and our special algorithms for the study YOLO 10, YOLO 9 and YOLO 10. After that, mo uh, model evaluation. And uh, it's the important thing, how we create this data set, what is our results, and then I will finish with my conclusion. In this study, our purpose is which model, YOLO 9 or YOLO 10, can be used more efficiently in UAV-based real-time vehicle detection. It is very important to real-time vehicle detection uh, because with real-time traffic detection, traffic in traffic uh, vehicle detection, is uh, if there is a crash or any other bad situation, we can control it. Also, we can control the traffic with the UAV systems in very short minutes. So we can continue with what subject detection. Object detection is the finding the objects and its classification on the image with the object detection algorithms. With the object detection, we can uh, find the size of the image, uh, location, and the number of the uh, image in one a uh, number of the uh, image, say, um, number of the objects in an image. Uh, so what's the EAV based object detection? In this study, we used, uh, we created our data set via UAV systems and we programmed our uh, UAV to an autonomous flight and uh, our UAV flight at different heights, different altitude, uh, even in different camera angle. And uh, while it's flying, we record a video and we capture some image. And uh, with this image, we, we created a data set for the real time vehicle detection. If we talk about what is the uh, object detection algorithm, we can talk about the object detection algorithm in two terms, actually. Uh, we can say two-stage object detection algorithm. The other one is one-stage object detection algorithm. In two-stage object detection algorithms, uh, the algorithms uh, can classify and uh, detect the objects in two paths. In one path, uh, the algorithm uh, the algorithm defined its uh, bounding box, and after second pass, the uh, algorithm uh, defined its classification. Uh, for this uh, two-stage object detection, RCNN family is the most, uh, most popular family, and RCNN have three uh, algorithm, RCNN, fast RCNN, and faster RCNN. Faster RCNN is the more fast and more accurate uh, detect, uh, detector for the two-stage object detection algorithm. Uh, faster RCNN algorithm yeah, is more accurate, but it's more slow. So uh, in our real-time object detection, we need the algorithm need to be very fast. So if, uh, because of it, we always uh, choose to use a single stage object detection algorithm. Single stage object detection is a bit different from the two stage object detection algorithms. Single stage object detection algorithms uh, in one pass, they can define their uh, object uh, bounding box and it says are uh, it classified the object. For single, st uh, single stage object detection algorithm, the Yola family is the most popular and more accurate uh, family uh, for for us and if i can say if i say uh, 
uh, have YOLO verbs. YOLO, first of all, YOLO uh, divides into a grid of cells, the input image, it's the, our input image. Uh, it puts into a grid of cells and it estimates for each of the probability uh, of an object existing and uh, if an object's bounding box coordinates. Uh, then lastly, algorithm uh, predicts our, uh, its classification. We can continue with our uh, special algorithms for this study. Uh, YOLO online algorithm was the most uh, was last version, one of the last versions uh, in uh, 2024. Uh, the three versions of YOLO published. YOLO online is the first uh, published algorithm in uh, 2024. Uh, Leo and his colleagues uh, published the uh, YOLO online, and it it was trying. They were uh, they were trying to solve the speed problem that persisted the, the other uh, object detection uh, models in YOLO family or in other object detection models. Uh, YOLO online is based on the YOLO seven uh, algorithm in its network architecture. It's very uh, similar, but there are two different uh, models. GLEARN and the PGI model. Uh, GLEARN, PGI model solves the gradient uh, convergence problems uh, by creating reliable gradient uh, through a reversible branching. And you can see here uh, the GLEARN model designs the uh, incorporates of SSD, at, uh, SSD net and ELEM models. SSD net, uh, we see it in YOLO 5 uh, module and ELAM module was from the YOLO, uh, YOLO 8 module. Uh, and uh, thanks to the GLAM module, uh, YOLO 9 algorithm has a lighter network architecture. And uh, because of its lighter network architecture, YOLO 9 can uh, make faster and more accurate detection. Here, there is a YOLO 10, YOLO 10 published two months uh, after uh, YOLO 9 algorithm. YOLO in YOLO 10 uh, model, uh, it was introduced to improve the, of the capability of the previous models of YOLO family. Uh, there is some uh, differences in also YOLO 10 model. YOLO 10 model reduces the completional burden uh, of the model by rejecting the application of non-maximum suppression. In our, uh, from first to nine YOLO, YOLO used non-maximum suppression, but in YOLO 10, they rejected the using non-maximum suppression. But uh, YOLO 10 replaces the non-maximum uh, suppression model with the consistent binary assignments and matching matrices. And it's enabling the more efficient and cohesive training with YOLO 10 model. And also for accuracy, YOLO 10 employs the large kernel uh, convolution and partial self uh, attention to boost performance while minimizing completional cost. It's very important to minimizing completional cost. It makes our algorithm more fast and more accurate. We, uh, we used widely uh, performance metrics uh, <laughs> to numerically compare uh, the performance of our algorithm in detail. In precision, you know, precision uh, reverse the proportion of the truly positive samples among the, uh, those classified uh, as positive. And uh, recall, refers to ratio of the detected object to the total number of uh, real object and F1 score is calculated by harmonically averaging of the precision and recall values and mean average positive is a critical parameter for us. It used to evaluate uh, for uh, evaluate the accuracy and performance of the object identification models. Yes, it is the very important thing in our study. Uh, in order for the algorithm to have a better performance, uh, the data set is very important. We need to uh, prepare the data set very carefully and very detailed. 
In our data set, the, the image were created by you, saving UAV uh, based videos and images with the autonomous UAV flight. And uh, now I will tell you uh, how do we how we uh, collect the data step by step. First of all, we fly we plan a flight route and we plan for collection data points in the traffic, and then we do a flight check before. So we need to uh, check our drone has any problem in autonomous yeah. flight or is safety, uh, and uh, we do some flight implementation uh, means the UAV takeoff and begin the aerial monitoring system mission and we uh, monitor uh, we monitor the flight data altitude angle uh, different uh, systems and then uh, we save all the images and videos uh, to do our micro SD card and we call the UAV come back home safely and after that we checked our uh, image and after we collect image we did uh, some image acquisition and data augmentation and we created our data set and we divided in, uh, our data set into three training data set uh, validation data set and the test data set uh, after we trained our algorithm we validated our data set and we tested our model i guess i have less means so i will directly pass the test results uh, in the two pictures you can see that uh, a car is behind the truck and uh, the truck uh, mask the mask our uh, car mostly so the algorithm didn't uh, detected our uh, object in these figures uh, it's the yellow tent object detection uh, examples in here you can see there's a white car in white road it looks the colors are look very similar so the algorithm didn't detect it and also there is here a black car the algorithm didn't uh, detected this black car here uh, there is a black car it's because uh, shape the algorithm didn't detect it and here there are some objects and they look uh, a car actually the color uh, likes it is white and it is black their colors uh, similar to looks like a car so algorithm uh, detected it uh, wrongly again here uh, the bus shadow mask uh, are black car and here there is a black car in shadow and here it is detected but uh, it's detected wrongly because in here we can see that uh, the bounding box is larger than what we want uh, it's the algorithm include a bit shadow into the car so it is also wrong thing for our uh, detection things if, if we see in numerically yellow 10 and yellow uh, 9 yellow 10 is have much more superior uh, detection performance than yellow 9 in every file and i will uh, say a bit more thing uh, we can see that in car precision uh, for both of algorithm is much superior than the other class of objects why because uh, you you can also see that there are a lot of car in uh, one of the image and there are much more less than truck uh, bicycle uh, truck motorcycle but they are less uh, objects in one image so the, we can uh, train the algorithm with much more uh, car so both of algorithm can uh, have the both of our, our algorithm have much more superior uh, detection capability in car detection and you can also see in performance metrics, uh, yellow 10 have uh, much more superior uh, object detection capability. And what is our result? We also see that, uh, and we can also realize yellow 10 algorithm has uh, more faster than yellow 9 algorithm. So 
in our real time object detection uh, studies with UAV system, YOLO 10 algorithm uh, is has uh, YOLO 10 algorithm is uh, much more suitable for uh, these studies and uh, it's more fast and more accurate algorithm in every field. Thank you for listening to me. If there is any question for me, I am here to answer. Yeah, thank you, Professor Ayam. Is there any question for Professor Ayam? No, we did not analyze it. Okay. Fernando, I don't know. Uh, there is a, a question in the in the chat, but I cannot see it. I'm going to open it. Uh, it the question is, uh, what is the system system used for image capturing? UAV systems. Yeah, the system. What is the system that you use for capturing the image on the the UAV. Actually, we, we have a camera uh, ah. in UAV uh -huh. while autonomous flight, uh, the camera recording a video and we can uh, capture some uh, image. We take, we save it in micro SD card and after UAV come back home, we take this SD card and we put and we can look the uh, photos. Okay, and there is another question from the room. The, the question is, uh, is the image proce processed in, in the drone or inside the drone in real time or not? Uh, for this study, we didn't, but uh, for my other study, I can do real time detection with UAV. Yeah, it is still, uh, our precision is uh, a bit low uh, than like uh, zero, 0 0.86 i guess my last study 89 uh, it's not much uh, superior but now we can also do real time object detection in our drones for other study i have a lot of study for object detection in my other study i did real time yes okay. there is a last question here uh, have you considered a lower number of class of interest to improve MAP? Yes, yes, uh, we did, but uh, sometimes uh, we can't solve this problem. Also, uh, in I am living in, uh, I'm from Turkey and I'm living in Mercy. So in that area, sometimes uh, there is no allowed to fly with UAV systems. So in uh, when they allow area, I couldn't find the other lower uh, number of class. So when I find, I capture some image, but uh, in my area, they don't allow me to fly everywhere. So it's a bit difficult for me, but I always try it. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Um, thank thank you for the presentation. You. Uh, okay, next, we move to the next, uh, work. This work is titled A Comparative Analysis of Object Detection Model for, for Drown Sinus Detection, Evaluating Raw, Processed and Hybrid Image Datasets with Faster RCNN. Uh, the speaker is Professor Maria Laura Miranda. Uh, Professor Miranda, you have the, the floor now. Hi, um, let me share it. Uh, can everyone see uh, the presentation? Yes, uh, it's okay. Okay. Well. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Maria Laura Miranda Leon. I'm a master's student of science in, in artificial intelligence at the Faculty of Engineering uh, at the Autonomous University of Querétaro. Today, I will present the work developed by I and the doctors Jesus Carlos Pedraza Ortega, 
Marco Antonio Aceves Fernández and Juan Manuel Ramos Arregui. The title of this work is A Comparative Analysis of Object, Object Detection Model for Drowsiness Detection, Evaluating Raw, Processed, and Hybrid Image Dataset with Faster RCNN. Well, here is the content I will be presenting you, to you. Uh, introduction, methodology, results, and discussion, conclusions, and references. Well, first, um, according to, oh, here, according to the Yearbook of Federal Road uh, Accident Statistic 2024, 5.10% uh, of the traffic accidents in Mexico in 2023 uh, were caused by driver drowsiness. This statistic highlights the importance of staying alert uh, while while driving and implementing strategies uh, to prevent fatigue because um, drowsiness uh, significantly reduces uh, reaction times and impairs decision-making abilities. In this context, exploring the methods for effectively detecting signs of drowsiness becomes essential. So the central goal of this study is to evaluate the performance of the object detection model faster RCNN with ResNet 50 and FPN using the uh, using three data sets, one with raw images, another with processed images, and a hybrid set combination of both. Uh, then uh, compare the effectiveness of each data, uh, data set in identifying signs of drowsiness in facial images. The current state of art reveals uh, multiple methods for detecting drowsiness. These include biological approaches uh, such as encephalograms and other neurological studies. Another strategy involves monitoring vehicle behavior commonly used in intelligent vehicles with integrated ADA system. Lastly, uh, visual science detection, uh, which is the focus of this study. Uh, the, visu the visual science refer to features like closed eyes, uh, which may indicate that the driver has fallen asleep, or yawning, which is a clear sign of fatigue or drowsiness. And how can we work with visible signs? Well, um, here we have an example of a study conducted in 2020 by, by Kepsava and his team demonstrating the detection of drowsiness, reaching an accuracy of 98%. 0.2%. However, despite the model's uh, strong metrics, it struggled with recognizing new faces when it was submitted to additional testing. This work was achieved uh, by using convolutional neural networks and image processing. Now, regarding uh, image processing, although it is considered a new concept, the reality is that it has been present since the first paintings. These, uh, as these require some touch-ups to enhance certain attributes or characteristics. Later, with the invention of photography in 1826, photographers adapted the, their needs with new techniques. Following this, in the 1950s, digital image processing emerged initially to improve uh, image from space probes and and, but even today, despite uh, having a high re resolution image, uh, a high resolution image quality, uh, image processing remains essential for tasks such as uh, spatial image uh, reconstruction, performing high precision operations in the medical field, and other applications like enhancing and improving images for uh, use in artificial intelligence. Now for the artificial intelligence part, there, there is a type of artificial neural network called convolutional neural networks. Uh, these uh, play an important role in uh, image processing, especially for image classification and object detection due to their ability to process uh, great structured data uh, like they are the images. Now we go on for the methodology. 
with that in mind, it was proposed to follow uh, the following methodology that we can see uh, in the flowchart, which I will explain step by step. First, uh, in the first phase, uh, a public database uh, from Kaggle was downloaded, containing 400 images of human faces with visible signs of drowsiness and without uh, such signs. These images were put into three into three sets referred as A, B, and C. The images were cropped to square dimensions resized then by uh, to 512 by 512 pixels and convert to PNG format. For set A, the images were left in their original form. For set B, the image quality was enhanced using MATLAB, applying shadow reduction, brightness adjustments, and grayscale transformation to emphasize re relevant facial features. Set C, um, Set C uh, was a hybrid set wa that was created by uh, randomly selecting 200 images uh, from each set A and B. These sets were then annotated by using BOTT tools uh, with labels such as no yawn, face, eyes open, eyes closed, and yawn, representing signs of drowsiness or its absence. The study uh, utilized a faster RCNN model, with, which is uh, available in the Python's Torch and Vision Library. This model it is known for its efficiency in object detection tasks due to its two-stage architecture, a regional proposal network that generates regions proposals, and a fast, fast uh, RCNN detector that classifies and adjusts bounding boxes. Then transfer learning was applied to adapt the model to the study's specific requirements, then training it on the three datasets with the following hyperparameters, like batch size of four, initial learning rate of 0 0.01, momentum of 0 0.9, and 100 epochs. Then the classification layer was then modified to six target classes. And in this way, uh, for each data, uh, data set trained uh, with the model, the following results were obtained. The analysis of the loss curves showed that all models performed well, but model B was the most time efficient, likely due to using grayscale images, were, which um, are a which are a single channel model a uh, which used a raw, raw images in this in this term three channels rgb exhibit the lowest loss enabling better identification of um, distinctive features and uh, on the other hand um, model c showed balanced performance with a minimal loss difference of only 0 0.01. Now in terms of evolution met metrics, model A had a slight advantage in accuracy followed by models B then by C. Although the differences were not statistically significant in class specific detection, model B excelled in detecting no yawn and eyes open, while model A was superior at recognizing faces, eyes closed, and yawn, while model C performed slightly below models B and models A and B. But even so, with within its own results, it stand out for its precision and eyes open and yawn, which tell us that uh, they are relatively close uh, in results with uh, with A and B. Now, for detection on static images, uh, well, it, it is important to know that the training was conducted with a, da a data set uh, that included eight different individuals distinct from the three subjects uh, we use in this part for the testing. This approach achieved effective uh, performance in static, in static images. Specifically, models B and C uh, demonstrated a strong phase detection capabilities with model C performing particularly, 
particularly uh, well in detecting closed eyes. Additionally, models A and C um, were effective in yawning detection, as uh, it, as you can see in the illustration and, and the figure. In summary, uh, model B proved to be most efficient in terms of execution time. Model A achieved the lowest loss during training, and model C provided a middle ground. Um, the evolution the evolution suggested that for tests that prioritize efficiency, image processing techniques uh, are effective, while tests required precision and detailed feature extraction benefits from maintaining the RGB format. And finally, for a balanced performance, using a hybrid data set appears to offer the best results. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, for the conclusion, well, the the use of faster RCNN enable the enable a a comprehensive uh, comparative analysis of object detection models focused on identifying drowsiness features among the evaluated models. The one trained with a hybrid data set, including both processed and raw images, showed uh, a balanced performance. However, the data suggests that a more effective strategy might involve developing a new semi-processed data set uh, rather than relying on the hybrid approach. This, um, this proposed data set would require less image processing, incorporating features like square images, um, shadow elimination, and retention of the RGB information. These adjustments could enhance the preservation of critical details um, leading to more effective uh, detection capabilities based on image characteristic. Uh, additionally, there is uh, a potential to extend this study to real-time detection. And here are my references, and uh, I guess that will be it. And thank you all for your attention. Here's my contact information, and I'm here if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Is there any question? Okay. I have some uh, some questions. For example, the first one <laughs> maybe is uh, mm -hmm. obvious, but. Uh, most of the time when you are driving a car, uh, you use solar glasses, for example. Yes. And I think uh, the method that you're proposing could have some problems there. So yes. have you trying to use only other face aspects uh, like uh, emote, uh, other spe facial expression that you can recognize in order to see if the driver is sleeping or something like that? Yes. Um do that this work uh, emerged from a preliminary analysis of my master's thesis uh, and due to time constraints uh, i was unable to consider that uh, that aspect um however i i believe it is something i will definitely keep in mind for the future projects maybe uh, introducing some um indicators like the the position where uh, uh, when we when we drive the car and uh, maybe uh, we get a little bit fatigued or uh, a little bit a little bit drowsy then we can go uh, even uh, forward or backward or maybe in another uh, awkward uh, position okay and the other one is because uh, while you are using rcnn uh, and not other uh, object that are commission algorithms or architectures yeah um well, uh, since uh, well, I, I um, since this is a just preliminary results, uh, I have not yet finished doing uh, the experiments. So it can be said I, I have not yet reached the definitive answer, or I have not yet reached the okay. results that I'm expecting. However, um, I may, how I said, um, uh. I will have a uh, other other set of semi-processed images, or a, I even can change it to another neural networks like YOLO um, uh, V8 or AV10. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Miranda, for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Now you are going to move to the next uh, work. This work is titled Enhanced Network Intrusion Detection Using a Hybrid CNN LSTM Approach on the UNSW MB15 data, data set. This work is presented by Professor Sarim Tasnim. Please, Professor Tasnim, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Is my screen is visible? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Um, Assalamu alaikum and a very good day, everyone. I am Zain Justin Pierre. Uh, recently graduated uh, my BSc uh, program from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering from Raj University of Engineering and Technology, and I am from Bangladesh. Uh, today, I'll be presenting on this confer uh, conference, and the authors of the paper are myself, Sarin Justin Pierre, and Hafsa Vinte Kibria. Uh, our paper ID is 120, and our title is Enhanced Network Intrusion Detection Using a Hybrid CNN LSTM Approach on the UNSW MB15 Dataset. Uh, in this study, we explored how well the intrusion detection systems can perform using a combination of convolutional neural network and long short term memory model. Uh, this slide uh, presents the outline of today's presentation, where I'll be in, uh, introduce my research topic. Also, I'll discuss about the motivation, objectives, and the methods I have used. Also, discuss about the results and the funding of our study. Uh, cybersecurity is mainly the pro practice of protecting computer systems from unauthorized access and uh, protect the system from any kinds of uh, disruption. And the network intrusion detection systems enables this process by monitoring and analyzing computer networks and uh, analyzing the traffic to, uh, to uh, protect us from unauthorized and malicious activities. There are various kinds of cybersecurity schemes, such as encryption, firewalls, antivirus, and intrusion detection and prevention systems. These schemes help us to defend against unauthorized access and protect us from many kinds of attack situations and complex scenarios. Uh, my main motivation to choose this research topic is the increasing need of security and data privacy as the traditional methods that we have mentioned earlier, such as firewall, antivirus, they are signature best. So they are insufficient to tackle all types of cyber attacks. And uh, they only perform well in known types of attacks that are being, uh, very known to us. So attackers can easily bypass these this types of situations and, and uh, harm us. So also uh, day by day, the number of cyber attacks and uh, crime are increasing alarmingly. So there is a necessity to introduce with more intelligent and advanced techniques that will prevent uh, from any kinds of attacks or intruders and protect our system. Uh, the reason we have chosen uh, deep learning models over the machine learning models uh, because deep learning models uh, has uh, emerged as a very significant tool that uh, actually suppress the machine learning model. And it has the uh, key advantage to self-extract, uh, self-feature extraction, uh, which they can easily do without any mutual intervention. Also, uh, they are very effective in handling huge data and they have uh, pro proved to uh, show their performance improve. The main objective of this research is to mainly uh, build a model that can help us to enhance the intrusion detection uh, systems and uh, improve the overall accuracy. Uh, 
And uh, we try to build a model that is more scalable to large scale network and uh, allow us to detect in real time detection. There are uh, many uh, research uh, or studies uh, that have uh, used uh, or conducted these types of research, such as the first paper uh, uh, named Deep Learning Approach for Intelligent Intuition Detection System have used uh, five, uh, six types of uh, data set, and they have applied DNN model, uh, Deep Neural Network model, and they have attained a very high accuracy, and they have also uh, perform the intrusion detection using uh, deep learning models. But they have some limitations that they have very high false positive rates. So we try to work on these limitations. Also, the second study, CNN NSPM, hybrid deep learning neural network for intrusion uh, detection systems, applied uh, three types of data set, which is CIC IDS 2017, UNSW NV15 and WSM leaders. They have applied CNN LSTM model, which is a hybrid model, and attained almost 94.53% for binary classification and 82.41% for multiplex classification. They have introduced a hybrid technique with two individual models, CNN and LSTM. They have mentioned that uh, they had difficulties with multiplex situation. So it is a limitation for them. The third study that have also used the CNN LSTM model with these uh, mentioned data set have uh, attained also a very high accuracy using the hybrid technique, but they have only uh, showed uh, the results on training and validation data, and they uh, they introduced some difficulties in imbalanced data. Set. Well, this, uh, this has uh, opened a scope for our further research that we have conducted. And this is the methodology we have used. We have uh, chosen our data set and pre-processed it. And uh, we have balanced, balanced our data set and then in, uh, implemented our model. And we evaluated on test data to uh, find out two categories of uh, um, classification, which is attack and non-attack situation. Uh, in binary class classification, our model detects two types of uh, situation. One is attack type and one is non-attack type. And in multi-class situation, as for our data set, we detect 10 types of uh, classes. Uh, among one is normal, which means non-attack uh, non situation. This is the data set we, are, uh, we have used, UNSW MD15, which is a very popular data set. And it has uh, two types of set. One is training set and another is testing set. The training set is uh, used in our research for only training and validation purpose. And we have used this testing set for evaluating the test results and uh, ensure the model's performance. Uh, here are the records of train and test set. And uh, there are, uh, previously I have said that uh, we can detect 10 types of attacks by using UNSW and U15, and there are 42 features. Uh, this, uh, car, uh, this graph shows the data imbalance uh, of binary classification where we can see the data distribution for uh, attack class and non attack class. And here are the records uh, that are uh, mentioned in UNSW NP15. And for multi-class classification, here is the data distribution. And this is the records uh, for multi-class classification for both train and test data. This is the model architecture we have used. We have tried to use CNN and LSPM and combine them. First, our model applies convolutional neural network and then it uh, follows by the long short term memory models, which actually uh, performed well for um, a hybrid technique that allows us to uh, implement both the models, uh, good thing to one model and extract a good performance. Here is the number of total parameters, total trainable and non trainable parameters. This is the experimental result or our findings of this study. And 
we have attained uh, almost 97.19% uh, accuracy in binary class classification and uh, for valid uh, validation accuracy and for test accuracy, we have attained 88.91%. And for multi class classification, we have attained 87.70% for validation accuracy, which was on validate the validation data. And for test accuracy, we have attained 75.16% accuracy. And also the precision F1 score, score and recall is mentioned here. Uh, this slide includes the curve accuracy and loss curves for binary classification. Here in the uh, graph, we can see that uh, uh, with the increasing number of epochs, our model accuracy improves. Also, the validation accuracy improves and the loss decreases, which actually uh, specifies that our model is performing well. This is the accuracy and loss curve for multi class classification. And uh, it actually uh, shows the train and validation accuracy and the evaluation part that has been conducted on this data, which was completely unseen. This is the confusion matrix for binary class classification. It shows for both training sets and testing sets for binary class that only detect attack class and non attack class. For multi class scenarios, it detects nine different types of attacks and one normal attack. So, uh, com uh, completely, it's full 10 types of attacks in both for training set and testing set. The uh, raw ROC card that shows uh, a very high AUC uh, rate of 0 0.98 for binary class classification shows that how well our model is performing based on our uh, architecture. This is a justification of the study as there are many state of art models and uh, it, it uh, shows a comparison of uh, our paper with other papers and it shows that it performs many other papers activities and perform well. This is for binary class classification and this is for multi class classification. So the uh, multi class classification scenario has Com uh, combiningly less accuracy than the binary class because it introduces nine more complex attacks. But uh, our model tried to perform well in both binary and multi class classification combinedly using this hybrid data. Uh, we have many limitations uh, as we only use one data set. So uh, there could be more data sets and more techniques can be implemented. Also, uh, we have tried to balance our data set by using class weight, but still it, it introduced some imbalances and more further advanced techniques can be implemented so uh, we can handle more amounts of data. In future work, we aim to uh, work on these uh, categories and improve our uh, model's robustness. Also, we can uh, we would like to introduce more data set or to generate more data set to uh, to improve our model accuracy. But overall, our model uh, performed well on the very popular UNSW NV NV fifteen data set. And here is the references that we have uh, used, and this concludes our presentation. And thank you very much for your patience and attention. If you have any questions, I'd like to answer. Okay, thank you, Professor Salim. Is there any question for, for the audience? In the audience? Mm -hmm. We see some, no. Okay, I have one question, uh, Professor Salim. Um, you are improving a lot, it's, it's very interesting, you are improving a lot the other works, other previous works, but I'm interested uh, about the time that you are using or you're consuming to to detect this attack. Is that better than previous uh, 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 that they reported in the liter literature? Uh, do you improve these algorithms in, in the time, not only in the performance? Uh, yes, uh, we try to reduce uh, the time or complexities. Although first, uh, it, it was our first experiment to in, uh, in implement this model. 
So at first, it, it is very complex model. We chose very complex architecture. But uh, with the more research, we, we are trying to uh, reduce the complexity to improve our training time. Okay, thank you. Do you think that your algorithm can be used in time sensitive networks? <laughs> Maybe it's too, too early to do that, but I'm not sure. I didn't understand the um, question. There is a, a branch, I'm studying now time sensitive networks. In this network, we have some times, very strict times to deliver uh, the data or the, the streams from one point to an end point. And uh, we are also, uh, we maybe have some attacks in this kind of networks, but I know if your algorithm can run in a, in a very efficient time in such a way that I can use in these time sensitive networks. Uh, maybe it's actually, too easy. <laughs> no, I don't know. Continue, please. Uh, actually, uh, we are using uh, LSTM that actually uh, work on temporal dependencies and uh, work on a sequence of time. So it helps to detect real time uh, attack. Uh, so in this preliminary situation, it might not uh, work well in actual time based uh, attacks, but I hope with further studies we can improve it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Is there any question from the audience? And no. So thank you, Professor Sarim. Thank, thank you, you for this presentation. And now we are going to move to the next uh, uh, work. This work is titled Computational Complexity Reduction in Feature Detections via Nonlinear Component Analysis and information quantitative synthesis. This uh, work is presented by Professor Cheng Mao Ji. So, Professor Cheng Mao, you have the floor. Good evening. Can you see it? Yeah, we can see. Okay, it. let's start. Good evening, everybody. This presentation is on computational complexity reduction in feature detection via nonlinear component analysis and the information quantitative synthesis. So this is Cheng Mao Yi. Outline. A quick introduction will be given at first. Then the major part, nonlinear component analysis. After that, the simple applications and the numerical simulations will be made. The quantitative synthesis in frequency domain and the quantitative uh, synthesis in spatial domain will both be discussed in the detail afterwards. Eventually, conclusions will be made, followed by the reference. So a little about me. And I'm Zheng Mao Yi, a professor in College of Engineering at Southern University. My research interest encompasses control and optimization with diverse applications of a classical, modern, and intelligent control theory on electrical, mechanical, automotive, and biomedical system as well as uh, signal processing and uh, image processing. And I myself am a multidisciplinary researcher who has the first author publication cover all the leading control proceedings in three prestigious engineering society, IEEE, ASME, and SAE. And also I hold like a sole authorship in HEV transaction and SAE transaction. And uh, my expertise is on integrations of teaching and research. I have instructed over 160 classes with zero assistance, including over 45 diverse courses of engineering and science. Being both the first author and a cross, uh, uh, corresponding author of over 150 uh, publications in leading engineering society, and uh, uh, my research outcome have been broadly presented and disseminated across over 40 top countries. So this work actually is a simple work, a quick introduction. The feature Detection itself is always a prom promising area in digital signal processing. There are two major types. One is a local uh, feature, the other one is a global feature. The local feature manifests the distinct and the informative details in the image. Global features provide a holistic aspect across the entire digital image. Now, in order to minimize the information loss, large memory space and high dimensional data are necessary. 
it also causes the computational complexity issues. As the alternative, dimensionality reduction schemes are always needed. So principal component analysis is traditionally a uh, dominating technique. Nonlinear component analysis instead is more powerful, which can identify and re remove both the linear and the nonlinear correlations between variables. Therefore, NCA has been applied for the dimensionality reduction for feature detection cases covering practical land, sea, and the space information. And after that, quantitative metrics are also proposed for information synthesis, including the discrete entropy, relative entropy, mutual information in the frequency domain, as well as the similarity, contrast, and the correlation in the spatial domain, so as to fully and uh, ensure the information integrity and the from various aspects. So what is a PCA? The principal component analysis turns out to be an unsupervised dimensionality reduction technique to examine underlying variabilities of multiple dimensional data. The high dimensional data are also projected onto low dimensional subspace, and the data rotation is needed to maximize the variance. So the underlying variable of data could be extracted by solving the eigenvalue problems. So eventually, a diagonalization of the conversion matrix C is made via VCA. So C is always a positive technique, like I say, matrix. And Xi right here is nothing but the center of the data. Lambda turns up the eigenvalue, and V turns up the corresponding eigenvector. All the solution lies in the same span of the vector set. So if we want to expand it from the PCA to NCA, that turns up the nonlinear kernel PCA is extracted the more substantial features than the linear PCA because it can, uh, like I said, reach up to infinite dimensionality. With the central data, NCA is able to implement the diagonalization on the covariance matrix once again. So now the solution now in the, another span of a nonlinear set, phi right here simply refers to the nonlinear kernel function. The nonlinear kernel function is defined as an inner, uh, inner product in the feature space. Now, NCA has been applied to the project data in the high dimensional space to lowest dimensional space without necessity of explicit mapping. It can even reach the infinite dimension, of course. And now we have like a three popular nonlinear kernel functions and the Gaussian, Laplace, and Cauchy. Well, here, Gaussian kernel is selected because its parameters provide a trade-off between the nonlinearity and the sensitivity. Okay, let's take a look of our simple application. The natural representation of a digital image suitable for human uh, perception is the two-color visible light bands. Tree chromatic theory is based on a nonlinear additive color vision. Then the two color acts as the mixture of a red, green, and a blue component in the three-dimensional Cartesian space. The projection for RGB onto the main diagonal is always the grayscale image, and which covers eight bits. The dimension of RGB and the grid like scale image are m by n by three and m by n respectively. Each component simply represents a single color channel. Also, each color band is formulated as a data matrix, which can be rearranged as a single vector of the lens MN. For RGB image, and with a three component, simply a combined vector of a lens three MN is to fully represent the features in all three primary color channels. Still after centering and the normalization, covariance matrix is computed and for the PCA, uh, for the NCA. Even vectors are subject to sorting in the descending order of uh, variance. And at the last, the transformation to low dimensional space is made, where well, only the components with the maximum variance and are retained after dimensionality reduction upon risk reconstruction. Okay. So the next topic is about a various whole application and also corresponding numerical simulations. Without the loss of a generality, two iconic digital images are selected. And the first one is a Golden Gate Bridge image, which turns up the wonder of a modern world, located in the city of San Francisco. The second is a Rusky Bridge, and which turns up the longest cable state bridge, and located in the city of Haisenwa. Okay, 
So in these slides, the source image and the uh, image of the dimension reduction are shown. The two source image are shown on the top, okay? And the two reconstructed image are shown, uh, let's say, like below, after dimensionality like re reduction. From the quantitative analysis, uh, where the visual appeal itself, and we see like a three dominant like a, uh, PCs. PC one show PC uh, three, and uh, is uh, is uh, proved they are enough to represent both the local and the global feature clearly. Well, the rest PC contains merely much lower variance and than the poor quality of a PC three already. So let's take a look of another slice. In this slice, the grayscale image of PC one, PC two, PC three, with respect to the two source image are uh, given. Based on the like a quantitative uh, quality evaluation itself, NCA and is successful in dimensionality reduction for feature detection. Now the features of a major objects can still be easily seen, and uh, here PC one show PC three right here. However, the quality uh, analysis itself is never that convincing. So what shall we do? The next point, we want to introduce the quantitative and the synthesis. The quantitative synthesis in both the frequency domain and the spatial domain will be conducted on the basis of information theory. Specifically, the information metric side of a discrete entropy, relative entropy, mutual information, dissimilarity, as contrast, and the correlation will be presented one by one. First of all, let's take a look at quantitative synthesis in frequency domain. And the first one I want to introduce is discrete entropy. And it shows the average uncertainty of an information source. It also defines the summation of the sums of a, of a product between the probability function of the outcome and the log function of the inverse of the probability. For the relative entropy, it is a measure of a distance and between two different distributions. The relative entropy is always non-negative. So it could reach its minimum of zero if and only if two uh, distribution PI and the QI, they are identical to each other. For the mutual information, it measures the amount of information that one digital image contains about the other. And uh, it is a non-negative symmetric function and indicating the statistical de dependence between images. For a special case, when the two digital images are totally independent, the mutual information reaches zero. And the mutual information of the image based itself, however, is equal to its discrete entropy. OK, let's uh, make some comparisons. And uh, in this like, slides, we have uh, the, like I said, like a table right here. The covers are the five different uh, columns. And uh, the five different columns show us the result based on the source image and the image of the dimensionality reduction, as well as the, uh, the uh, component PC1, PC2, and the PC3. And the two case study were conducted. One is about the Golden Gate Bridge image. The other one is a Rusky Bridge image. OK, for each of those, discrete entropy, relative entropy, and the mutual information and have been found out. So the conclusion for both cases are, are the same. Now, the discrete uh, entropy of a PC1 is less than, let's say, just a slightly less than the, uh, the source image contains the most features, of course. The discrete uh, entropy of a PC2 and a PC3 decreases remarkably. The relative entropy of the uh, uh, between the PC1 and the source image and the smallest among the, uh, like I said, among all of those, showing the best match, followed by the PC2 and the PC3. Regarding the mutual information, the mutual information between the PC1 and the, uh, the source image is largest, depicting the highest reduction in uncertainty. However, the low mutual uh, information between the source image and the PC2 and the PC3 simply show the small reduction in uncertainty. Now, from this result, in frequency domain, it shows that the rows of a PC2 and the PC3 are quite limited compared uh, with the PC1. The reconstructed image matches the source image tightly after dimensionality reduction, where frequency domain Synthesis. Okay, secondly, we also want to uh, have the quantitative synthesis in frequency, uh, spatial domain. In the spatial domain, 
the information matrix of a dissimilarity contract and the correlation are chosen. The co-occurrence matrix is to describe the distrib uh, distribution of uh, co-occurring values of a digital image. So let's take a look of the dissimilarity. This matrix depends on the local distance representation between two different digital images. And uh, the second one is the correlation. The correlation is another similarity measure where the image window is shifted along the side of a direction. And uh, left, right, up and down, and uh, also two diagonal directions. And the x, y right here are the coordinates of a co-occurrence matrix. Mu x, mu y, sigma y, x, sigma y. They are the mean value and the standard deviation of a probability density functions. And the t right here is nothing but the co-occurring pixel values. The third one we want to introduce is contrast. The contrast is the matrix to measure the variation of intensity distribution across each channel and being formulated by the last formula right over here. So once again, let's take a look of the uh, numerical simulation uh, result. So another comparison has been made. Now in the spatial domain, okay, we still have the five different columns. And the first one, and we have the data from the uh, source image. The second one is the data collected from the uh, the image after dimensionality uh, reduction. And the third one, fourth one, uh, uh, fifth one, they covers the information from PC1, PC2, and the PC3, respectively. And the two cases study for both of those, similarity, dissimilarity, contrast, and correlation will be covered. Now that Dissimilarity of a PC1 is a close to that of the source image. This similarity of a PC2 and the PC3 differ from the like say, like a source image significantly. After dimensionality reduction, and the dissimilarities and of the reconstructed image decrease just as slightly, resulting the image instead are smoother than the source image, because and the high like say, like a frequency component might be uh, like say, like a deleted. So now the contrast of a PC1 and uh, is also close to that of the source image. The contrast of the PC2 and the PC3 decreases uh, significantly. The contrast of reconstructed like, uh, image decreases slightly and uh, after dimensionality reduction. Okay. For the third, like I say, matrix correlation, this measure has just shown a very little change in each case. The correlation of a PC1 and the uh, uh, PC1 almost match that of the source like uh, image. The correlations like uh, uh, slightly drops in PC2 and uh, PC3. After dimensionality reduction, the correlation of a reconstructed image and uh, moderately decrease. So now the reconstructed image match the uh, like say, like, uh, the source image tightly after dimensionality reduction via spatial domain uh, synthesis once again, and the trade-off exist among the triable information loss, dimensionality reduction, and the smooth quality. OK, at this point, and uh, I want to uh, just uh, have a conclusion for this research. And the uh, feature detection involves the high dimensional computation. Dimensionality reduction is needed to decrease the computational complexity. Our goal is to fully retain all significant global features and local features after dimensionality reduction with the least possible information loss. Therefore, there is a simple uh, like, uh, presenta uh, presentation has been made. The nonlinear component analysis has been presented for the feature detection based on the land, sea, and the space information analysis. The NCA is more versatile than the classical principal component analysis. It does have the potential to extensively solve all complex feature de de uh, detection problems across miscellaneous types of a digital image, such as a satellite image and hyperspectral image. Now, the qualitative visual appeal can show feasibility of the proposed approach already. However, and it's not that convincing. And in this case, the quantitative synthesis in both the frequency domain and the spatial domain will always be more convincing than the quality analysis. And uh, that's the region NCA right now is a simple and also a feasible approach in computational complexity reduction for feature detection. The references 
of this work is listed in these slides. So now that's the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you. And now I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Cheng Mao. Thank you. Is there any question from the audience? Okay, there is no question. Hey. Hey, one. Sorry, man, don't need okay, one question, Professor Cheng Mao. Hey, have you tried to uh, use your this non-linear non component analysis to more complex uh, images? I, I mean, oh. uh, the, the bridge of San Francisco seems to be a very easy image because okay. you have some lines, but there are many complex images. Uh, okay, so thank you. So based on the coherence point of view, and both of those will cover the same lysolic size, and M and N, and they are the same. The only difference right here and is each component. In the principal component analysis, and each component tends to be X, I, and X, Z, something like that. But using the, like I said, like a nonlinear component analysis, uh, a nonlinear kernel has been introduced. And then we have a nonlinear function phi of X, I. And uh, like original X, I has been replaced by X, Y. Original X, Z has been replaced by X, Z. So that's the difference. This phi defines a nonlinear kernel function. Its biggest, like say, advantage is it can cover so both the like say like a uh, linear and nonlinear, like I said, like a uh, uh, relationship. So eventually, and uh, it can uh, just uh, cover up to infinite dimension. Okay. And uh, we have some result based on the principal component analysis uh, as well. But that one is the quality is not as good as the nonlinear component analysis. So eventually, the nonlinear component analysis has been uh, like say published right right here. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Is there any, you. any other question? No? So thank you, Professor, for your presentation. Okay, thank uh, you for uh, the opportunity. I okay. Professor, oh, no, no, there is no question. So thank you, Professor. So thank you. Thank you. Let's move to the next, uh, to the next work. This work is uh, titled Synthesis, uh, Synthesis of uh, WFN from reduced David logs based on even precedence structures. The speaker is Professor Ernesto Lopez Mellado. Uh, Professor Lopez Mellado, you have the floor. Thank you, Antonio. I will. Uh... Okay, can you see my presentation? No, we are seeing you. So there. Sure. No. Hmm. I cannot see the presentation. Is anyone in the audience can see the presentation? No. No, thank you. No, no, just wait a minute. I am just uh, using a new version of Teams. <laughs> Share. No. Okay, now? No. There is a, there is a chair, a chair screen bottom, but it's a lot. And no problem. Okay. Okay, I, now? We are seeing my, now my screen? screen, yes. 
but not the presentation, it's your main screen. Now you see my, the PowerPoint application? Uh, yes. And now maybe you uh, can yes, see the presentation now. The presentation. So, uh, 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 sorry. Now uh, uh, we we want to change of uh, subject matter. I, I will present two uh, papers regarding modeling of uh, discrete event processing. This presentation uh, the present, uh, 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 has to do with the paper synthesis of workflow nets. Uh, this uh, paper has been written. Uh, sorry, the, the collaboration uh, with uh, Nestor Martinez from Simbestap, Uni Universidad uh, uh, Guadalajara campus. Now. Sorry, I have also some problems with. Okay, the, the this paper is is placed in the context of process discovery, where uh, we want to uh, build a model in an automatic model uh, uh, from the behavioral data, giving a sequence of events of a discrete events process. Uh, uh, the observed behavior. Uh, is given as a set of event sequence and through a, a method of uh, identification of of, uh, of, uh, of process uh, you want to build the automatically the petri net sorry I, I, there are something that uh, is uh, no Mm. I'm very sorry. I cannot share again the presentation. Ora. Okay. Now this uh, uh, this presentation is organized as follows. First, I'm going to give some uh, uh, background uh, concepts. Then I will present the the two steps uh, of of the method, uh, even precedence structures, the and the world of workflow net synthesis. Finally, some tests and conclusions. Process discovery is uh, the automatic building of, of models from a set of sequence of event, tax, uh, activities uh, that represent the behavior of some process. The process this problem is also called uh, process identification. In this uh, scheme, I show that uh, you have a, as input of the discovery method a set of sequences of events and you can obtain a, a pertinent model uh, that uh, replace uh, these sequences. The problem is uh, to find the, the method. So uh, there are uh, many algorithms to, to, to discover uh, a, a workflow net from the, the sequences. Uh, uh, the, the sequences of events uh, I, uh, uh, are uh, contained in an event log. The event log is a set of traces, uh, which is uh, which are a sequence of, of events that belong to uh, uh, event alphabet. In this example, we have three sequences of three traces in which uh, we have a several symbols of a given uh, uh, event alphabet. The traces that include uh, repeated subsequences are, are called iterative traces. You can see that uh, sequence uh, 
uh, the repetition of this subsequence digit trace. Okay, now what we'll get is a subclass, a subclass of, uh, of, of PetriNet that has an initial place and a final place. The events are associated to transitions to represent uh, the relation between these uh, events. Okay, the problem is uh, derived for an, another another problem that uh, is uh, that that tries to uh, discover simply work of nets from huge uh, event logs. If, if we uh, make the discovery of uh, a process through a hush event log, we have a a uh, very net, very, very large, uh, that is uh, called a spa spaghetti-like uh, uh, model. And uh, the approach we follow with the past is uh, to split the log into clusters of events. Uh, every cluster is a part of a partition of, of the event log. So uh, we have less, le less uh, traces in every, in every cluster, but uh, they are uh, somehow similar. And with every cluster, we have a, a small uh, a small models, smaller than the, the original, the, than the global model. So uh, the correct problem is uh, to build this uh, small, uh, nets, which are a subnets of the general uh, event log, using using only uh, sigma transitions. The the amount uh, the of uh, of events uh, in in the model. So uh, uh, the this uh, event log reduced event logs uh, contain traces that have common subtraces. This is the reason why the the, the they are uh, 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 grouped in uh, in the uh, in the clusters. Okay, the approach uh, we follow is uh, the following uh, from the event log. We build uh, first uh, a graph, it is called the event structure, and after several transformations of the graph, we arrive to the to get the the work from it. Uh, there are some related words in the past uh, in ninety. 1995, 98, uh, Aragual proposed a, a, a basic uh, approach that uh, that uh, builds this kind of, of event structure. After that, uh, Bergentun uh, recently uh, used uh, uh, this uh, kind of structure, which are uh, has uh, diagrams, and uh, which mean that. Uh, all the sequences are represented by uh, partially ordered sets. Okay, the, the event structure uh, argue first for on the relation of uh, event precedence. Uh, this relation is built by pair, is, is pairs of uh, events that have a relation of precedence. The, the, uh, the pair A, B means that uh, the event A precedes B in the in sigma, or all the sigma in the log. So uh, in this example, you have the T traces, and we represent uh, the relation uh, with all this uh, pair of uh, uh, events, X is before A, A is before B, 
uh, B is before C, etc. So uh, this uh, relation has a graphical representation, which is given by this uh, uh, graph, which use uh, all the the vertices are uh, all the the symbols in the alphabet plus uh, these two special events, two special uh, symbols for represent the the initial event and the final event. Okay, now the next step uh, the next step is uh, remove the iteration. In the, the even precedent graphs may have uh, some cycles that represent the iteration uh, the, uh, uh, produced by the uh, iterative uh, the phrases. So uh, we remove the, the, the cycle and the, all, uh, the traces are transformed uh, into a, a trace without uh, iteration. So the graph is is not uh, longer uh, a, a graph with cycles, any any cycle. So uh, we we will work with uh, uh, this uh, uh, set of, of traces that have no cycles. I'm sorry, I cannot. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, the next step, step is uh, determine the concurrent events. Uh, an event is concurrent to another event if they appear in the sequence in the different order. This means that A, B are concurrent if uh, uh, the relation A, B is C in the, in the even uh, precedence relation and has been C in another, uh, in the different order, in the other, in the precedence relation of, of the other trace. In this example, we show that uh, uh, we have the, the, the sequence, uh, the subsequence B, C, and then the subsequence uh, CV. So these uh, uh, two events are concurrent. This can be seen in the, in the event precedence graph, the, where um, you can see the, in one trace, uh, uh, we have the precedence BC and the other precedence CV in different but in different, in different order. So uh, we can determine that uh, the, these two events are concurrent. I'm sorry, I'm sorry again. I... My presentation is, 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 is blocked. Okay, uh, again, I see Antonio. Oh, okay. <laughs> So uh, this uh, relation is transformed, and we uh, uh, obtain uh, here a compound event that represents the the concurrency between B and C in the other in the in the two traces, and we can uh, have a. We are not seeing your presentation. Ah, yeah, masita. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm very sorry.
Mm. Okay, can you see my presentation now? Yes, now. Yes. Yes, now. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, we have the 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 even relation, even present relation uh, transformer uh, using a common uh, concurrent event, compound event. Okay. Now uh, we cannot see your presentation again, and you have one minute to finish. There? Yeah, we see it. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, this uh, standard, uh, this uh, even relation, even precedence relation is, uh, is extended uh, by applying the transitive closure of every uh, tracer. And then we, we have a uh, the the precedence uh, uh, a long term precedence and this is the the complete uh, precedence relation standard then uh, we 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 will reduce uh, focusing on these events. And we will present the relation that, that arrive uh, to this, uh, these events. And we have a, a still a re more reduced uh, event relation. And finally, we apply another reduction. We have a, a more simplified uh, event relation. Then uh, uh, for every uh, relation in the and in the every in the event relation uh, we have an equivalence to uh, implement uh, to transform uh, uh, a petri net substructure this is a very intuitive and then we have the relation between uh, an even uh, and a compound event uh, for uh, for obtaining the the concurrence precedence, uh, the same symmetrical in, in a symmetrical way, is uh, for obtaining the other uh, precedence relation between a compound even and another. Yeah. Okay. Now, you uh, now, professor. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we conclude. Uh, we have another uh, translation form, and we can apply this uh, all these uh, recipes uh, to obtain a, a, a petri net, a workflow net, uh, and finally we add the uh, structure, the sub iterative substructure. These are some tests. Uh, 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 obtained by the, the software implemented to, by uh, Nestor. And uh, we have another example. And finally, we have the, this, the same example, but uh, executed by another algorithm, which cannot uh, obtain the same, the same algorithm. 
uh, and wound. Well, uh, this uh, approach preserved the long term present in relation between events. Uh, uh, this reduced the surplus language of the of the discovered model, and we uh, arrived to uh, discover redo transition, redo silent transition, initialize and finalize. Here uh, in, in this model, we can see uh, an an actual transition. This transition has not uh, label. Uh, of the alphabet. Here also we have a, a cycle that is performed by executing this silent transition. So uh, um, um, that's all I think we have work to do. Okay, thank you, Professor, for the presentation. And uh, is there any question from the audience? No. Uh, I have a question maybe too. The first one is uh, when you have the the set of uh, sequences and you have uh, two events that are uh, uh, permutating in, in, the, in these uh, two sequences, you say that you have a concurrence of these two events. Yeah. But uh, in, in general, we are not sure if these uh, events are in concurrence or in mutual exclusion. Uh, how do you decide that you are in concurrence and not in mutual discussion exclusion? Um, no, it's an interesting question. But uh, if we uh, see that these two uh, events appear in different order, it means that there are no precondition uh, for uh, um, they're not no the, there are they have not the same precondition so uh, this uh, event uh, can be uh, represented by a concurrency. Even if you don't know that uh, these uh, uh, events uh, uh, are in a mutual exclusion, so um, uh, uh, in this approach, uh, we cannot see that uh, we cannot perceive the occurrence of two events at the same time. All the events are are, uh, are recorded sequentially. This is the the main reason. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you for the presentation again. And we need to move to the next uh, work. This work is titled "Accuracy Measures for Time in Petri Nets," and the speaker is again Professor Ernesto Lopez Mellado. Professor, please have the floor again. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I do really have a no. Okay. I close. Okay, I'm going to share. Now you can see my desk. You can see the application. A PowerPoint. Mm, no. 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 Uh, um, no. Now I can see your screen. Maybe. Okay. Now maybe you see. Yes, but you are on the top. <laughs> you are on the screen. Okay. So. 
Okay, thank you for your patience, sir. It's okay, are you see my... We can see your slides, and I, slides. we can see you at the same time on the screen also. I just had to. Okay, go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> I know, no, no. Porque en Hawaii. Sorry, uh, just uh, one minute. I am the last uh, speaker. Okay. Is it? Uh, okay. You now, can see your, your screen, but not the, not the slides. Okay. Now the, the slides. Yeah, we okay. can see the slides. Okay. Okay, thank you. This is uh, this work uh, is related to evaluation of of time and petri net models. Okay. Uh, this work ha has been done in collaboration with uh, Marina Montes, my student uh, in civil staff. Uh, campus Guadalajara. Uh, this uh, uh, this presentation has to do with uh, model assessment in which uh, uh, a time model is uh, compared with a set of sequences, uh, even sequences that have a, a time of occurrence every 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 sequence, every event, and uh, we obtain a measure that uh, uh, relates uh, uh, the, these two objects, uh, time and petri the sequence, and, and provides a, a measure about the, the accuracy of, of the time and of the time it's sequences. So uh, we, I will present in the introduction some background uh, concepts, background concepts, uh, and how we uh, the approach for evaluating transition time at Petri Nets. And then I will present two measures for time at Petri Nets and the, the type of of time petrinet call it uh, time petrinet, which, which is an uh, interval time at petrinet, and then uh, the conclusion, the the context of this uh, presentation is process discovery, uh, uh, discovery is uh, process uh, mining, which is uh, uh, the composed in three sub areas: discovery, conform conformance checking, and enhancement. Uh, discovery. Uh, I already talked in the previous in the previous presentation. Uh, obtains a model from event sequences that represent the behavior of of uh, of some processes. And then conformance shaking. It compares the model with the input data of the discovery that. Uh, uh, which is our uh, event sequences. Uh, the conformance checking uh, provides uh, uh, some features called uh, quality dimensions. And then the enablement uh, has to do with the improvement of, of, uh, of the behavior of the, of the processes. Conformance checkings uh, uh, include uh, four uh, quality dimensions, which compare uh, the input uh, uh, the input data, input event data formed by the by the the sequences, the lam lambda is the event log, and the language of the of the obtaining model. Uh, feedness uh, relate uh, is related to the the 
representation of, of, the, of the traces of the sequences in the model. Precision has to do with the, the surplus behavior that, that is contained in, in the model, which is, has, is not in the event log. Generalization uh, has to do with some discovered uh, behavior in the model, which is in the, in the process, in the blue region, but it is not represented in the log. And then simplicity has to do with the structural complexity of the, of, of the model obtained. Uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, we talk about uh, accuracy dimension, which is performed on time at PetriNet. Okay, the background, uh, PetriNet is a, is a departed diagram, uh, which has uh, places and transitions. Uh, the, uh, the marking, which uh, determines the state of the of the net, a labeling function that assigns symbols to the transition. In this in this uh, this transition I show here, uh, the, the the label is uh, the symbol A associated to this transition. Mm. I, uh, Unblock it. I unblock it. I think uh, your, that your mouse is in the. Uh, how do you call this uh, this this mode that you are writing? You are using a pen and you're not, you are not using a pointer, so that is something could, you cannot use. No, I I don't use. Uh... The pointer, I, I. Okay. Now, uh, the time pet, pet net uh, is uh, a pet net with a timing function that assigns uh, to every transition a value uh, that represents the duration of the of the firing uh, of every transition. Uh, another type of petri net is the in, uh, is the interval time petri net that assigns to every transition an interval, which uh, means that uh, the duration may may, may be a lower bound uh, or a uh, an upper bound, and uh, all all the, uh, the duration may may uh, uh, have um, the the instant may may be uh, within the, this uh, lower bound and the upper bound. We follow the early firing semantics. That means that. Every transition that is uh, enabled can be fired. And the, the event log is a dated event log. Is the sequence associated every symbol with a duration, no, a, a date, excuse me. This is the, this is the instant in which uh, uh, event is uh, an event is is fired so uh okay what is the meaning of this uh in this example we have a uh, uh four transition and this is the, the duration of the transition uh, it means that uh, uh, the transition A fires at uh, the times zero. E duration uh, takes uh, three time units. After that, uh, uh, the 
the marking enables transition B and C in can fire with different uh, duration. For example, B is four and C is five. Then uh, with the last uh, transition fine, uh, finish uh, the firing is the instant eight after five time, uh, time units. Uh, transition E can, can fire and takes six. Okay, then uh, when we have uh, the times associated time as uh, intervals, the duration of the firing or every transition may uh, take uh, the, the lower bound uh, units or the upper bound. This means that, uh, this trans that the duration is between three and four. So uh, when uh, the next transition are fired, we have uh, two possibilities for every transition, is the firing at instant three or the firing at instant four. And the, also the, the ending of this uh, firing of the next transition is uh, in the instant nine, for example, and the instant 10. And oh, it, it happened the same for, for uh, transition C. And so on. Then uh, we, we see that uh, if we uh, replay the, the execution of, of the sequences here, we have a, a wider uh, possibility of uh, a time So uh, we uh, we will uh, uh, evaluate you the quality of the timing transitions. You have only one minute more. Okay. Uh, the function accuracy will have a, a value in the interval 0, 1 to, uh, uh, to declare the, the accuracy of, of the model. If we have a mo uh, the values uh, closer to 1, is uh, the model has a, a high accuracy. OK, that is a simpler example. We have uh, some uh, sequences, the model, and we will evaluate uh, the model. We have a value that indicates the accuracy of the model uh, res uh, regarding the, the, the timing function. So there is a, only uh, one uh, word dealing with accuracy, uh, a very complex uh, work, the approach. Uh, so uh, measure the, the deviation of every occurrence uh, of every 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 event in the in the sequence, and the lower time uh, deviation the uh, uh, is is better. In this example, uh, I show. Uh, a small uh, fragment of, of PetriNet. We have a, a, the the firing of the transition uh, by uh, considering the events in the model. This is the expected uh, schedule, and this is the 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 firing instant of the on the event sequence. Uh, uh, the as, as uh, input data. So we, we can see that we have a deviation, a delay in uh, on the 
first transition, another delay of uh, 0.3, and uh, an advance of, uh, of the final of uh, 0 0.2. Could you conclude, Professor? Yes. The deviation uh, okay, we compute the deviation in this uh, firing of the transitions and the expected uh, time of, of, of the transitions in the model. Uh, we take in, into account all the deviation and we divide this uh, deviation be, uh, uh, over uh, the total time of execution of the trace. And we have a total deviation. Then uh, the accuracy is computed uh, uh, taking into account the, the maximum deviation, the worst case, and we obtain uh, uh, the accuracy, which is uh, evaluated between zero and one. Uh, 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 similar and uh, there are two two ways of uh, performing the, the computation of the deviation one is uh, 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 is called the global deviation, in which uh, we, we have uh, delays and, and advance, and all are taken into account. Uh, uh, it, it is uh, valid for uh, evaluating the, the full ex execution of the process. Then uh, um, the local deviation taken uh, into account the timing of uh, of every every transition, the division in every transition. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Is there any okay. question from the audience? No. Uh, I have a question. Uh, have you considered another? Uh, time approaches for the petri nets. In this case, you are using windows, time windows associated to the transitions, but maybe you use uh, Gaussians on, on other distributions that maybe are better for the, the case, this case. Just listen to the first part of, uh, of the equation, but uh, in this uh, in this method, we, we uh, Address it the 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 most common type of petrinet. Okay, this uh, the time petrinet where uh, the, the 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 time is associated to every transition as a single value. Mm -hmm. As, a, as an approximation of uh, of the duration of uh, the event or the activity, and the other one that uh, associates uh, an interval. Mm -hmm. okay. There are other 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 way to associate the time to transitions, but uh, we are not addressing the, now this. This, uh, this this type of uh, type petri nets. Okay, thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. uh, this was our last presentation. Our last presentation. So thank you to uh, all of you for attending this uh, session. Also, thank you to okay. all the speakers for their fine presentations. And now I am closing this session.
Thank you for attending it and good evening. Okay, uh, please. Click. Sí. Uh, uh, Antonio, uh, good afternoon, Antonio. Good afternoon, Professor Lopez Mellado. First of all, thank you very much for your help and support to the conference. And, uh, and because of you, are experts on Petrinets. First of all, uh, Professor Lopez Mellado, uh, uh, what is the main motivation of the approach? Uh, uh, because uh, in the last part, you are, you are, uh, what are you looking for? Um, trying to measure the accuracy of some uh, petri net, fine petri net model. And, and I, I was also uh, trying to get some connection with your previous work about the reduction of the, mo of the models. And so uh, what is the main motivation you are looking for? So for some specific applications and what kind of applications? Okay, uh, uh, in process mining, the many words that uh, uh, are proposed to to discover to discover petrinet model, uh, but uh, most of of this uh, most of these works uh, do not deal with uh, time petrinet. So there are there are um, very few works uh, uh, that uh, uh, discover uh, time pattern. And in the in the case of uh, uh, accuracy, there are only one work. The, so the motivation is that uh, we need to obtain a better methods, for example, in accuracy, there is a one, only one uh, work uh, proposed by a colleague, Italian colleague, that, which is very complex, very complex. And, and besides, he use, uh, he use uh, uh, integer linear programming. And that becomes uh, very uh, inapplicable, okay? So we we try to uh, to obtain results, additional results, uh, to uh, for improving the other other works that uh, in the in the field of uh, uh, process discovery and, and performance checking, etc. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now we're closing this session. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to the speakers for the fine presentations. And we we will see you in the next uh, sessions. Thank you to all of you. Okay. Good evening. Thank you, Professor. Bye. Thank you, Antonio. Saludos. Thank you. Saludos. Bye.